Hi, Year 11 Biology. In this video, I will show you a simple demonstration which models the processes of endocytosis and exocytosis, which of course are both types of active transport. Now, if you would like to do this demonstration at home, you are more than welcome to. You will need a ball of string, uh, preferably a piece of string that is very flexible and easy to move. You will need any large object. In my case, I've chosen an egg, and this will represent a large molecule going in and out of the cell, and a pair of scissors. Now, year 11. The problem that I want you to solve is this. Imagine that this here is a cell in front of you, a circular shaped cell. The piece of string, of course, represents the cell membrane. Now, of course, like the fluid mosaic model explains, the cell membrane is very fluid or very flexible and it can easily change its shape. Now, the thing is, this egg represents a very important molecule that needs to get inside the cell. This could be something like a protein or a large carbohydrate molecule. Now, imagine that this needs to go inside. How will it go through the cell membrane from the external environment into the internal cytoplasm of the cell? How can it do this? Now, a lot of you are going to tell me that, Miss, the answer is simple diffusion, that this molecule will simply diffuse inside the cell. But that is not the case. Look how large this object is. It cannot simply get inside the cell without possibly bursting the cell membrane and killing the cell. So how will this large object get inside? So the answer is this. The answer is endocytosis. So here's the word for you. So you can have a look. Endocytosis or phagocytosis. There's two names for it. And what does this look like? It basically means that this large object can enter the cell not through diffusion, but through another process. What happens is the cell membrane is able to change its shape and it wraps itself around the large substance like this. As you can see though, it's not completely inside the cell. It is still, the large substance is still interacting with the external environment and we don't want that. We want it to be completely inside the cytoplasm. So again, the cell gets around this by changing its shape once more. Now have a look at this. Okay, the cell is now completely engulfing or completely surrounding the large substance or the large molecule. And it appears that the large molecule is actually now inside the cell. But it's actually not. It's actually located in this sort of sac or this sort of location of the cell. This sac over here, girls, is called a vesicle. It is called a vesicle. And if you look through your books again, you will find that a vesicle is a sac that stores or contains any sort of substance that the cell wants it to contain. Okay, but we still have a problem. This vesicle is still attached to the cell membrane over here. We don't want that. So what happens is, again, uh, proteins will disconnect the vesicle from the cell membrane. The cell membrane diff uh, sorry, attaches again over at this location. We once more have a nice round cell. And now we have a vesicle that contains the large substance. Now, if you have a look, girls, this large substance is now very much inside the cytoplasm of the cell. It is no longer outside in the external environment. And this process is called endocytosis. Now, we still have a problem. The vesicle still has, um, it, it still encloses or engulfs the substance. That's an easy fix. We have things inside the cells called lysosomes. They are special proteins that break substances down. So it breaks away the lysosome. Sorry, it breaks away the vesicle. And therefore we have the substance nice and secure inside our cell. Now again, year 11, this is called phago, sorry, phagocytosis or endocytosis. There are two names. Now what sort of cells do this? A lot of protists 
or um, water dwelling microorganisms such as amoeba do this to eat or take in their nutrients from their environment. If you have time to research that, you may. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this visual helped you understand endocytosis.